Okay, dear students, we continue with the class. The earliest chapters will be provide you later. Let's see, what is the e-recruitment actually? The internet recruitment takes the two basic forms. The first is centered on the employee's website. When the, the company has their own website and they uh, can can have some special the vacancies on the website, you can apply directly from the website. And second one approach when the the companies uh, advertise the, uh, about their vacancies in different kind of uh, web sources. Like maybe we have some web newspapers, they advertise, or we have some special like, uh, as you know, um, the recruiting agencies. So you can get the, the, the information about the vacancy from those sources. So and in recruitment, the advantages of recruitment is um, is cheap. Of course, it's cheap because you can go directly from internet. It's speed and worldwide. You can get you can get uh, the information about the vacancies in from many places, right? So uh, recruiting overseas, we also can recruit overseas. We have some uh, very high, uh, like uh, shortage skills in our country, or we have um, over uh, the less amount of employees, qualified employees. So uh, the first, given to you some recommendations why we can and why we should to recruit overseas. Like most of developed countries, they uh, practice the recruiting overseas because why? Because they, for example, is cheap. The recruiting countries where skills and qualifications is comparable. So first, it's very important when you are going to recruit the overseas. Um, try to recruit from those countries where the skills, knowledge, qualifications are same as in your country. Because the time for training, for teaching them, takes uh, lesser, uh, would be uh, very low costly for you. Next one, you can recruit the, in the countries with uh, relatively high unemployment. Of course, uh, if you would uh, recruit the people from the country where it's very high unemployment, so it's uh, the advantage for you can offer a uh, low salary, for example. It would be and very easy for you to get a uh, good workers. Next one, the meet potential talent face to face before employing them. Of course, uh, uh, when you uh, when companies recruit overseas, they have some uh, some Skype or telephone interviewing. But before you would sign the contract with them, you have to see the people face by face. You would invite them to your offices and have to look. And next one, ensure that the candidates have strong communication skills. Like if it's English-speaking countries, it's very important that they have uh, fluent English uh, and so on. Ensure that the appropriate accommodation is provided when you are recruiting the people. For example, if you would like to recruit over this, because it's like uh, cheaper for you, you can get uh, uh, very good workers, like constructions, the, the, cost, the, the people who work in, uh, in the construction field, most, I think, is uh, half people would be uh, invited from overseas because they can uh, provide them, um, they can get firstly very high qualified workers and they uh, can save some money on the salaries. But it's very important if you provide them the, uh, and will think about the accommodation, where those people will live if they come to your country. The, the, you have to uh, think about or provide the free accommodation or to arrange the accommodation, to arrange the, the living place for those employees. Okay, uh, some of you asked me about the first and second line. The first one, like this is recommendation, if you would like to uh, recruit the people overseas, you look at those countries where the skill qualification of the professionals are same with your country, with the standards of the education, uh, more uh, commonly same with uh, your country, which is practicing in your country. 
Of course, maybe you will look at the neighbors of your countries uh, because they are mostly the uh, same, and it will be very uh, it will be uh, f easy for you to train them faster and t to teach them how to work, how to get their responsibilities. Okay, uh, some of you asking me why the UK, United Kingdom, because uh, our e-book actually the crisis management book, they it's. Uh, um, it's been provided by the UK sciences in all the information, the statistics also is based on the UK programs. So you are actually studying based on the UK programs and the, uh, all the information like statistics, some recommendations of, uh, is based on the uh, UK uh, information. This is because um, we, for example, we we are uh, let's say uh, like um, we are trying to get the, some like international experience, uh, international study, right? And most of company, most of learning company, they take care about the, some USA uh, studying programs. But uh, for example, me, I'm uh, I have studied based on the UK programs, and I prefer to work on the uh, UK some uh, the literature and based on the UK sciences uh, recommendation and suggestions. For example. Because I, I can't get the, uh, the information based on the Afghanistan, uh, it's very hard for me. First, I don't know language. Uh, then it's, I think it's the information is not so wider than like uh, some UK information in the web in the web resources. Yes, right. Next one. If it's okay, we can move. Okay. Uh, you remember I have before in the f first topics I have sent you some the the ebook with the, uh, for human resource management study. So there is we have uh, some topics about the employee branding, control and evaluations, the correspondence and shortlisting. Uh, read you all those topics at home. Because we have a very huge amount of topics regarding the human resource management, but on the sessions we cover the main important things. Okay, uh, let's move on the selection methods. Uh, the selection as a two-way process. So useful points to interact with the candidate. So when we okay, we have already identified the method of recruitment, how we are going to recruit people. Now, how we we are, we are going to uh, study about how we can select the right people. First, uh, it's very important when we reply means fully fast. The pre postcard of knowledge means not to reply. That means you must you must care about the candidates, about the applicants. Uh, to reply very fast that they have been selected or not. The next one, contact corresponds in terms of what the applicants want to know. That means you uh, have to notify the applicants how long will they have to wait for the answer. For two weeks, one week, for one month. And if you have some assessment or testing based on the uh, vacancy, based on the positions, you have to Notify them how long it takes uh, and what it should should involve, what kind of questions and where it would be in which offices. The next one, the interview should be trained to ensure that they have uh, the f not only full knowledge about the information but also the uh, the skills to manage the interaction effectively. That means the HR managers must be very high qualified in the selection process. It's very important because the selection process. This is the the, the, the step where you find the the uh, the right people for your uh, companies. Okay, some of you asked me about the books. The ebook I sent to all of students that I have in the list. 
I, I think I have done it maybe two times, so if who didn't receive, just let me know. We'll, re we'll send you again. Uh, what is selection criteria? When we uh, we select the methods, we uh, first think about the selection criteria. That means uh, we have identified the vacancy, we have identified what the vacancy is, like we are looking at the sales manager. That sales manager, uh, we identify its criteria, like first, uh, should it have experience? How many years? Should it have uh, uh, some um, like uh, knowledge uh, in special uh, the programs or in special trends? Should it have a, a, like a skills like a, you know, a few uh, uh, the like uh, let's say mm, the the knowledge uh, knowledge and uh, the languages uh, different uh, interest languages. Or special attitudes must be communicable, uh, or they have a very good relation with the past companies. So about his interest, what he is interesting about uh, his uh, future plans, about the motivation. That means uh, how, what would be motivated, how the employees will be motivated to uh, to to done their job uh, very good, effect efficiency. And what is should uh, like uh, how the, we can say that most uh, different people are motivated by the different principles. Some is, uh, prefer a very good salary. Some prefer the the balance between work and family. Uh, it depends on the, um, the 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 people. It depends on the employees, right? And we have to think about these criteria. How we what we can offer to the uh, candidates. Uh, to get to obtain to the company. If we are looking at very talented people, not just the workers, uh, low skilled workers, of course, we always we are looking the best from the best, right? Some also we have uh, this, the different companies. They have some approaches. Um, they have uh, some, um, let's say, the perspectives, how they determine the selection criteria. For example, some companies, they require just very flexible and adaptable employees. That the employee should be very easy to come to work, easy to enter, to, to, to make their responsibilities. Some uh, we, uh, companies uh, prefer like a team or functional fit, which employees must be fit with the pre-existing work team. That means it must be uh, it must be entered very easy to the job itself and to the co to the uh, company's culture, and um, be like being uh, a part of the company. And job fit the, also the competence, personal skills, like knowledge, motivation. That means um, some companies. They just are focusing uh, on the competencies of the employees, about their personal skills, about their knowledge, motivates. They don't care about their flexibility, about how they would uh, interact with the employees or with the top managers. They look at the uh, different criteria. So uh, and we have some. Uh, right now, we are going to see the the difference, uh, the different kind of selection methods, and the combination of those methods would be the the best way for the organizations. Like for example, application forms we have. This is, I think, the common common method that we use in the selection application forms. Like we have some app applications, and the candidates will uh, fill up them and send to the company. And most of companies who has uh, their websites, they have uh, uh, the electronic applications in the websites. It's very easy for for the employers, for the new applicants, because you can go to internet, to website, directly apply, and send it, right? And the full company is very also good because you can see uh, a very uh, rich number of. Uh, applicants who applied for the vacancy, you can select the best uh, applicants for your vacancy. 
Next one, we have cell, cell vaccines and peer assessment. This is self selection questionnaire on the company website. Uh, maybe you have already faced with, uh, with this kind of method when the special questionnaires in the website is given to you, like about what is your na the name, what is your name, what is your experiences, knowledge, and skills, and so on. Next one, telephone interview. Also, we have uh, this kind of method, but this is the telephone interview is used in, in combination, for example, with the applications. First, you apply, you fill up all the questionnaires, then you have some telephone interview, like a second step would be in the recruiting. The next one is, uh, okay, some questions for discussions. We have what are the advantages of using the telephone interviews and what of types of job would be use this approach to selections. Okay, we are going to leave these uh, questions because I want to finish the selection methods first, and then we will back for them. We have some testing, for example, uh, the CAPD, the, the, the research, uh, this, is the, this is the research company in UK which gives some um, statistics information, like 75% of the organizations, they use uh, um, the testing. The testing can be numerically or uh, can be some literacy or some logical testing. And it could be used in different kinds of fields, uh, different kinds of fields of jobs. Also, we have some group selection medicine assistance centers. This is maybe your family. Uh, when excuse me, uh, dear teacher. Uh, sorry to 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 interrupt. Uh, would it be possible to explain to us some of the acronyms that we see? Like there was CIPD. IRS and so on, uh, because it's very new for us and we uh, cannot learn uh, even through the presentation we have. It would be great if you would please kindly uh, describe like what was the previous slide, CIPD, IRS and IDS. Okay, uh, like CIPD and IRS, this is a um, special research departments, research like companies in the UK. And this is the presentation will be, was prepared based on the, the book that I sent you. But there is, uh, I, I didn't find, um, the, let's see. The, the, I, actually, I didn't find the transcriptions of the CIPD and of the IRS. But that I know it's research companies which do some research based on uh, uh, based on the statistics data, based on the statistics information. They co collect there some information and provide the special kind of uh, researches. Uh, for for example, in HRM in human resource management. So you actually you don't care about this. The most important things for you that you should know uh, what kind of selection methods we use mostly uh, in the organizations. So thank you very much. But if you'd like to know about these uh, research companies, I can get you information on the next session. Okay. So about the group selection methods, also we have a s such kind of methods when uh, we. Um, we invite a few kinds of applicants and, for example, in our offices the, and give them some kind of assignments uh, and we are trying to identify uh, the best applicants from, the, from this group, who, with the, maybe with the leadership skills. And the, the selection groups and the like assignments based on the, the, the based on uh, the, the assignments like uh, which is being in the group, when we have some individual assignments in the group, the applicants seems looks as a competitors to each other. 
And in this kind of situation, uh, maybe they are think more widely, they logically, and become like uh, seeking to, like to win this kind of vacancy. This is also would be uh, very uh, helpful for the HR manager uh, to get a, um, uh, like qualified uh, applicant uh, employee or the employee with the leadership skills. But also, we have some drawbacks or disadvantages of this method. For example, um, uh, it's very hard to focus when you are competing with, uh, with uh, different people, yes? If you're doing your assignment at home uh, yourself at work quite time, maybe you can think more clearly, um, uh, like getting new ideas. But when it's uh, like competing, some, some competing game like uh, but it would be uh, difficult. You are trying to rush. Uh, maybe you can focus about some very important things you would like to uh, provide or suggest to the company and so on. But in this kind of methods, we uh, try to use it when we like to uh, find uh, like uh, people, yes, like with the leadership skills, the special people who would be run the team. Next one, we have some methods like work sampling or portfolios. This is CVs or resumes when we uh, send them to the companies. References, this is a, like when the, the, the somebody would recommend you as a good employee. Or it would be uh, your friend or the, uh, the top manager of the past company or anyone. The references, this is the recommendations. When you have the recommendation from the past companies, from the past jobs. So in the conclusion of the selection methods, so the best way, the best method is, is the combination of a few methods. So, because you can get a ver uh, when you use a, a combination of few methods, you would be able to find a very talented, uh, qualified uh, professionals. And different countries, they use the different methods. So what methods in your country use uh, depends uh, on your country. Portfolio of work sampling, this is, um, this is CVs, the uh, resume, like resume we see. CV or resume, when you give the about information about yourself, and sent to the company, the CV or resume. This is, for example, in Russia, Kazan, we use it, resume or CV. So another question for discuss. It could be argued that the selection process identifies candidates who are competent in the selection process rather than the candidates who are most competent to perform the job on offer. Okay, what this statement says? The statement says that do you think that the, the successful applicants, those who are actually very good in testing or questionaries in, uh, in, the, selection met, in the selection process, than the those maybe we have leave the, we, which is, we, we, which uh, leave the, the selection process? itself like do you think like you're for example maybe we uh, you're a very good uh, professional but you have mm, failed on the selection methods because of uh, different tasting maybe some numerical logically but you're a very good professional so maybe you you are that employee the which company is needed actually so why is the selection Methods and the human resource managers who work in under selection, they are very important because uh, they are responsible to find the right people to the company. So I have some suggestions about from Mr. Nozai says, if we check five references, 
the f I can say the five recommendations, the, the five recommendations from uh, peoples, from uh, applicants, and three of them give us a good answer, and the two others give a negative answer, then what we can do? Because actual selection methods have a three, uh, a different levels of the selection process. Okay, first you give some assignments, and three of them give a positive answer. Then from three of them, you give another assignment to find uh, uh, the best one. If you need a one candidate, one employee only, so you can continue with the assignments. Maybe assignment would be different. Before you have used some testing, this in time would be maybe some for logical thinking. Okay, another question. Should the reference address by giving the employee or employee can indirect reference check from the company he worked for? Ah, this is okay, this is like recommendations letter if you have so. The uh, the main top manager or director will sign this recommendation letter, and of course you have to give. If you like to to be uh, recruited, you must give a telephone of your direct top manager. For example, if you have so, or your the, the telephone of the CEO, or the the telephone of this company, and address if you like. So if the actually if the company asks you about this information, you have to give. But if you cannot, this depends on the job itself. If it's some very security, something in I mean, government department, depend on on the nature of the company you've been work and the nature of your profession, of your occupational. But mostly, for example. Um, they give uh, when they have some recommendation letter. They give uh, the name and telephone number of the personal direct uh, manager, because the your direct manager who you working under this manager, he knows uh, better you and can get a wide information about you about your past experience. Then, if they apply just to HR department, or you just give some, the, uh, you just uh, give the just uh, telephone number of this comp the company, because if they would can get the wrong people in, if it's large company, and maybe this uh, the, the employee um, didn't know you or have not so much information about you. So the uh, best uh, thing is you have to give the telephone number and the name of your personal manager, the direct manager which you are working under in the past experiences, in the past company. It's, uh, because it's, uh, if you have some, if you work in large companies, for example, we have some line managers then we have some top managers, the directors, investors, maybe he all, the, he actually didn't know about you if you work as a, uh, line, as a the specialist, as a, the, the, the normal workers, and can't say about you something good or bad things, like common. So this is, okay, this is the answer for the questions for Mr. Uh, let's move to the next one. Employee uh, about staff retention. Okay, employee retention. What is the employee retention? It becomes an important item in the human resource management. Employee retention. That means um, when we like to retain the employees to 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 hold them in the company. Like, and uh, here is. Uh, we can see uh, the information in the table six that the job tenure in the UK among the permanent employees. How actually work is uh, long? How how long the 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 employees work in the company? For example, 27 percentage of workers work one month or 
from one month to two years. Twenty four percentage work from two to five two to five years. Thirteen percentage of work is work five to eight and so on. What actually the turnover rates and the trends? The staff turnover always rise when the economy is strong and jobs are unplanful because there are more opportunities available for the people to change employers. And conversely, during the recession, staff turnover falls because relatively few actions per month positions are advertised. This is uh, very uh, uh, simple. Like we ha when we had uh, uh, the and we still have some economic crisis in the countries, the turnover falls because we are, as we are employed, we can never see the uh, another opportunities uh, like to get a um, better job than you are working. But when the 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 company, or for example, the country is uh, has a good fin uh, financial, political, economical positions, we have a high turnover. The people, because uh, the company, they have uh, they can do a very good business, get a very high profit, and they can offer a high salary to the professionals. And of course, maybe some of the employees they prefer to change their job to a, another one, to bet with the better conditions, with the better condition which is become sure the salaries, benefits, rewards, or the uh, working conditions like time regulations and so on. So here is uh, important: when economic the, the the economy of the country is strong, the staff turnover is will rise. The staff turnover, like we have, uh, would be uh, the the staff would be changed very, um, let's say, like often. And but when we have some recessions, the finance crisis, the turnover falls because all the suffers, the company suffers, and of course it will be difficult to find better job. Maybe you, would, you can lose your uh, existence. Uh, job so better to just work and do your duties. Next one, the Church Institute of Personal and Development, CIPD actually this is CIPD, I'm sorry. Because now we know what is CIPD, the Church Institute of Personal Development, as I said, the Research Development de Department. It's precisely show the retailing cutting to be the city with the highest turnover levels, with the raised average of 40% in the recent years. By the contrast, the most stable workforce are the, to be found the public services, where report and ultra rates only 10%. Page. So, uh, the, we have a, a, a very high staff turnover in the retailing and catering. So think about why retail and catering services, uh, the people uh, change very uh, quickly and fast their jobs. And we have some stable work employees in the public services. Like public, we can say some government places. We have uh, some stable workers. So think about those two statements. Turnover and, and turnover and lighting costing. So here is given to you the main reason people have for voluntary living. Why the people uh, leave the jobs actually? First, the factors like outside. The the reason like when people moving away or traveling very uh, often. The functional, the poor work performance, the push. The dissatisfaction with the work and organization itself. And pool factors like a dis dissatisfaction with the low salary, no opportunities for development. Of course, this is the main thing. When we leave the, the companies, we leave the job. When we have a low salary, first, we have no opportunities for career ladder. We have um, bad condition for working. Uh, and maybe we have to move or we would like to travel, we cannot stay in the one office. This is the main reason. And in the staff retention, we have a different uh, uh, kind of strategies. How we can 
retain the people in the company, how we can hold the people in the company, how we can, but not just the people. Uh, we mean about we talking about the professionals. We're talking about the uh, high skilled, uh, qualified uh, employees. First is the pay payment. Of course, money, cash, salary is the most uh, uh, thing that motivates the people to work in the company. So many organizations use the pay raise as their uh, pr uh, prime weapon in the rating staff, the retaining staff. However. And uh, there, they are concerned while changing the work will compensate to pay. Pay will never compensate for having to do a boring or unstimulating work. Okay, it talks about if your uh, job is very boring, unstimulating, you, you don't like actually this job and this is your, your uh, occurring every day. Maybe the pay would be uh, not as important for you as a, as a different criteria. Uh, next one, the advantage of pay strategy is uh, pay is very easily matched by the competitors. That uh, the the competitors, the, the uh, other companies, can offer same salary uh, for you. So and. As me, as, as we're talking right now, we are as a company, as a human resource department. For us, it would be difficult to retain the people in the company because such a salary we offer, the different companies can offer too. Thus, the pay is more attractive in recruitment terms, but the effects on staff retention will be limited. Like the, in the recruitment, we use the pay as a strategy when we recruit a new people. We are trying to attract people with the high salaries and wages. Next one, a uh, question for discussion we have some. What are the factors do you think employees can start to be more important than pay? What role can the insurance faction play in helping to develop this? So what do you think, in your opinion, uh, besides the payment, besides the salary and wages, what is another uh, things, criteria is important for you in the job. So any suggestion or recommendation from you? What do you think? What kind of condition, uh, what kind of conditions of the job is more important for you than the payment? Okay, some of you, the train development. Yes, I agree with you, the insurance. Okay, because insurance actually is not so cheap as it is. Capacity of building. The, do you mean about the, the the offices, the the conditions, the working conditions, the friendly conditions? Yes. For example, friend, about friendly conditions is very important. This is we talk about the um, the organization's culture. The relationship in the company between the top management and the employees. Good environment, like, yes, this is the environment in the company is very important too. Yeah, development and the future development, reputation of the organization. Security, okay, I'm, I agree with you, the security is important too. Okay, you have given me the most, uh, the most common uh, criteria that uh, important for the employee than the payment itself. The organization image for somebody, the reputation of the organization is more important than the payment itself. For example, it's like, uh, for example, you prefer work to some in the international companies is very with the high reputations because in those kinds of companies uh, you have some you would be, you would be have some stable work first you would have some career developments and some trainings too. Because most of the large companies, some Jewish companies, they provide the, f the training and development programs at a free rate. Okay, very good. Um, 
I am agree with you with your answers. Thanks a lot. So let's move. Another one, the benefits. Benefits is the uh, same as the, uh, the salary and wages, like staff discounts, holiday entitlements, private health care schemes, pension schemes. Uh, what else? Uh, some p they also have some positive effect on the staff turnover. And they also very less uh, less easily li imitated by the competitors. Okay, here is staff discounts. This is we, we work. We can uh, talk about about the people who working in the banks. For example, they have the the internal uh, staff of the bank. They, maybe they have special discounts to get some um, credits, so, uh, mortgage, and so on. This is very good benefit for the people. Or some holidays, also very important, some companies, maybe you would get not so high pay, uh, salary, but your holiday, holidays will take um, uh, like a longer time than in, uh, compared to other companies. Some private health care, this is what we talk about insurances. The pension schemes, also important pension schemes. But I have to say about the pensions, uh, uh, about the pension scheme, the people can sign which are living in developed countries because they are, have a very good pension program compared to the, uh, the developing countries. Uh, about the uh, the pensions is is first the, the the programs is not so attractive because you uh, they have a, a lower the low amount of the pensions. And then maybe the, the payment of the pension would be uh, very low. So it's, uh, it's in, in such countries they won't look at the pension scheme as a benefit. But like in the European countries, they have very good, like let's say uh, in England or in the Germany, they have a very good pension scheme. They have prog very good pension program because they have the pensions payments is equal to salary. It's mostly equal to salary. With that kind of pension, you can travel. You can. You won't need to work after your pe the retirement. You can also. You might travel. Uh, you might buy some traveling and so on. I mean, this is uh, the the pension. The payment of the pensions is uh, would be uh, equal to your previous salaries or even be uh, better uh, than uh, the, the salaries itself, the, the normal salaries in the country. For example, as I know in England, the English people, uh, I have seen in the world a lot of Eng uh, the old English people, they are traveling. Uh, be because actually first they all they are already in the retirement and why they are trained because they have already uh, they have a good pensions uh, payments it's it's enough for them to travel around the world to join actually their uh, part the the life their the 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 another part of their life but we have hope that in our countries we have the same pension programs. We are hoping for government. Let's see next one. The also another one strategies of the retention is the managing expectations. Like a major cause of job dissatisfaction in the hands of high staff turnover is the experience of having once high hopes of a new employment that by the realization that is not going to be as enjoyable or similar as anticipated. In other words, it's important not to mislead candidates about the nature of the work that they will be doing. Like here it states that it's very important that your employees are satisfied with their jobs, what they are doing actually. For example, uh, maybe some companies, I cannot say what kind of companies, but some companies, they can 
offer you very good future in India, India company with the career development and so on. But the other maybe at the um, at the present situation, you won't be so satisfied as you are expected actually. So in very important the how you uh, manage the uh, employees. How uh, and what they are actually expecting to get from their jobs is very important. How you motivate and stimulate them, and they are satisfied with their jobs, with their responsibilities or no. Next one, inductions. Induction is uh, is is very important. Also, the effective induction is very important. The return that means induction when we recruit a people in the first time and how they induct to the company, how they enter the company, how they uh, will be, how they train, how they we train and uh, teach them uh, in, speci in specific uh, positions. Next one, for example, uh, Greg and Vassworth, they show in the analysis of 870 sounds of workers starting new jobs in 1990, that is many as 70% had left within three months. A reason poorly managed expectations and ineffective inductions. Like because for example the when the uh, new employing employees come to your company, uh, first we have to induct them to the company itself, show them their main duties and responsibilities, what they must do do, how they must to work and show uh, maybe train them and for special programs and this is process when we do we the, when the uh, new employees are going to uh, know about the the companies and about their duties going to familiarize it it's very important how you do it so an effective and time induction is the process where which leads to reduction of turnover is been at the beginning of employment relationship. This says that the uh, most uh, employees they left uh, the companies in uh, the first time when they uh, start to work in the company in the first three months. Why it happened? Because it's all about the management. It depends how you have managed the people to work, how you start to manage them. For example, the induction programs gives you the induction programs when uh, the the new employee is going to um, going to learn about the company, about the, their main duties. It takes a time. It could be a few days, and or it takes some uh, number of weeks. And the HR department is responsible for inductions. Uh, what it involves presentations. The induction when we present the company to the new employee. We present him or her, the, the, all the departments of the company. We present the term condition, how they would work in the company. We present the strategy of the company. We present, for example, the offices actually the, of the company, the products and services we offer to the customers. And in job, and actually, who is uh, also responsible for the uh, job-based index is the line manager. The first, your line manager, which you're working under, will explain you your main duties. Maybe you need some, would we need some trainings? and some teaching uh, courses uh, to, to make your jobs. And this is process is very important when you are recruiting the people and when you would like to retain them in the company, to hold them in your company. Another one starts of returns is the family friendly HR practices. The labor force survey Studies show that the between five to ten percentage of employees leave jobs for family and personal reasons. So here it says it's very important when the employees have a balance between the family and work, because most people maybe is concerned about the women they leave their jobs because of uh, uh, because of family, because they don't have enough time. 
uh, to work as well to make the uh, some uh, um, the family duties to care child to care the house and so on. Next one. The reason for voluntary resignation from the job is uh, enable to juggle the demands of the job with those of the family. This is the same thing as I told you previously. So here is given to you uh, how the UK employees now obligated by the law to provide the following minimum rights for the employees. I think we have looked at previously slides about this that about nine months leave for all employees, some additional three months unpaid maternity leave and so on. This all about these things you can do it yourself, but we have looked in the previously I think we have uh we have looked in the rights of the imp the the rights for employees and all workers about these rights. Okay, some of you ask me about the uh, family. Can you go back about the family part? The reasons? Family friendly HR practices. Here is that says um, the most uh, employed they, they left their jobs because uh, first they need uh, some balance between family and job. And also very important, when the family friendly HR practice is been. It's examples like some companies, uh, for example, uh, they, uh, they practice like uh, they have, they can give you some two, three hours free in a day. And for example, if you need to go home and do your some things, uh, your duties. Or like they, in companies can have in offices, like a small kindergarten, they play garden for your ch for your children. This is concerns about the large companies, like uh, as I know, uh, like uh, the the international, the most you see um, the large companies, they have uh, the small like kindergarten for for the existing employees' children. And it's very easy because if you have small children, it's very difficult to leave them because maybe it's, uh, it's uh, early for them for the school or for the kindergarten. So you can go for your jobs with them and live in this uh, play garden, in, which is located in the offices in the same place. You see, you it's easy for you. You are you it's you no, you are not caring about your uh, ch children. You can go and see ch any time, and they are always with you. So you, it's, there's some uh, large companies they practice this kind of services. It's like not services. This is they apply they the, some family friendly practices to retain the staff. Some. This is just like an example. Another one uh, strategy for retention we have a train and development. This is very important. Like um, to retain your staff, uh, to be mo to to make your staff be motivated, you must always you have to always uh, uh, provide them some development opportunities, right? Like some training programs or some training courses. For example, the most expensive types of train interventions like train programs is in, involved the in long term courses like MBA, CAPD or accounting qualifications. Some uh, the qualifications for accountants. Mm -hmm. Some companies they, yes they provide the MBA courses uh, at free. But this is uh, uh, depends on the companies uh, uh, because it's mostly is uh, very uh, uh, large and uh, 
the large companies and very developed country uh, companies. Or maybe they can provide you some MBA courses, not as free at charges, but it's like they can uh, divide the charges from your uh, salaries. So another one, improving the quality of line management. So of course, in the retention is very important. How you manage people, it depends on the management uh, from the management side. If you manage people in correct way, you care about people, you provide the opportunities for careers, for training them, of course, who, who will leave this kind of company? With the good condition, with the good salary, uh, you won't leave uh, mm, such kind of company. Next one, the solution is to take action on various fronts to improve the effectiveness of supervisors. So how we can improve our management? The management who is, it is a supervisor's top management, right? Uh, first, we should select people for line management roles following an assistance of their supervisory capa capabilities. This is must be very communicable and with leadership skills people, right? Ensure that all newly employed line managers train in art of effective supervision. Like they, they know how to train the people, how to manage the people. And regularly apply the line manager on these supervisory skills. Uh, the the controlman and uh, the the appraisement is very important too. Okay, here is given to you by the CAPD, which is Charles Institute of Personal Development, some survey on the recruitment and retentions. Uh, about the stuff, the top ten interests were as follows like a best uh, return strategies that used uh, the companies. Uh, the, the, the place of number 10 takes a better recognition of employees' efforts. Nine, offering the coaching and mentoring, Ment coaching and mentoring training. Improving the work-life balance is very important. Improving the benefits, to, like salaries, rivers. Improving the employee involvement, that the, you will ensure that the employee are involved in the, in the company's uh, overall strategy. Improving the line manager HR skills. In, increasing the pay, increasing the salaries and wages. Improving the selection techniques. And increasing the learning development opportunities. As you already, you have given to me all these examples actually. And improving the induction process. You see, this all the 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 initiatives like um, acts must be done to retain uh, uh, people effectively. So another question for discussion: Think about your own experiences at work or those of close friends and family. What were the key factors that affect decisions to leave a particular job? What, if anything, could the employer have done to ensure that no resignation took place? And homework, that, so that's all. We have completed our topic for today for resourcing. So would you like to answer for the questions? As I know, the time is OK. Anyway, we have a little time. Let's finish the questions for discussions. So the question is, if you uh, leave the previous job, the question, why do you leave have you, why did you leave the job? What the reason was? Think about this. And you, if you you have to give me your reason first, no need, no need to tell me about your company, the name of company and so on, your position, just the reason why did you leave the job? And what if you won't believe what the, the past company must do for you to to retain you in the company? What do you think? This is the same questions. So any suggestions? I think uh, most of you have a very uh, uh, rich experiences. Uh, I think most of you are uh, working at different companies previously, right? So anyone wants to 
um, tell me the reasons why did you leave the previous job? So I can see Mr. Fari. Yes, Mr. Fari, please. I think we again cannot hear you. Yes, Mr. Fari. Hello. Hello. Yes. Please talk on. Oh, oh no! This up. Uh, this again connection is very bad. We cannot hear the Mr. Fari. I'm sorry. If you chat for me, I will announce your answer. So Mr. Navid wants to talk. Yes. Hello. Uh, yes. Uh, good evening, classes and uh, dear ma'am. Again, uh, uh, first of all, one thing was from one of our classmates: induction. Induction is the process of training or introducing the staff uh, on the first week of uh, the staff employment. Uh, sorry. So, uh, okay, uh, the Mr. I take some pause. So I would like to uh, tell about the uh, another people who give me answer. Some say they, um, they, pro they have some projects. Mr. Kaka, for example, he says that he had some projects. It's already ended and he uh, joined a new company because, like, do you remember we talk about the contracts, like uh, types of contracts? Some contracts we have uh, uh, based on the projects. You finish your project, that means you already signed the the company. Another one says that the job environment sorry. was not good. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I was cut off. Can I continue again? Yes, yes, Miss Mary. Sorry, you can continue. Yeah, sorry. Um, um, I have left the previous job because of the family issues. Uh, uh, I was working away from the uh, my city and town and family, so it was uh, more the family force to bring me to this new job. Um, and um, most of the time in our country, the key factors that uh, affect decisions to leave a particular job is either due to uh, organizational culture uh, when the staff gets uh, more expectation at the beginning and then when they start to work the job will be different and sometimes it is due to um, um, uh, the um, uh, job uh, type uh, or the length of the contracts or the stability of the job or the job security as we, they call it also and also uh, it depends on the uh, the um, places where you work for example secure places uh, better places uh, I mean the, the, the uh, cities when you work especially if you think in Afghanistan and uh, also uh, the salary the, the other benefits um, and the uh, and these things, uh, but mainly uh, the, the the issues now in Afghanistan is security, the family being close to the family, and uh, of course because of this uh, uh, recession time now, when the international community is uh, drawing back from Afghanistan, um, there are less work uh, opportunities for the people. And um, because of that, people try to find a better long-term position, permanent positions, permanent contracts, or jobs for to have a, a job security. Um, what if anything could the employer have done to ensure that no resignation took place? Uh, the, the things that you mentioned: a good induction, um, a better uh, organizational culture, good benefits, salaries. Um, um, uh, good opportunities for training and development, um, and uh, mm, mm, yeah, uh, 
these, these are very important. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Navid. You have given a good, clear picture about your reasons. Yes, I agree with that. Uh, so also you are uh, giving me some answers about the environment. It's very important the environment of the company uh, because I know a few people who resigned because they didn't uh, like the environment of the company. They have some problems with their uh, line manager, with their supervisors. And here it is very important as we talked previously in the slides that the managing supervisors in the correct and the efficiency way is uh, very important. And I have to say most of companies they are they for, they forgot about the supervisors actually about the appraisement about the the, the supervisor about the uh, the way of managing the people and also we have some I answer has about the discriminations of employees yes right we have uh, in some country in some countries in some companies we have some discriminations of the employees. Uh, I can tell you, for example, um, my husband is working um, in the in international company, and his department is very special. His actually department they prefer uh, work, the employees and men only. This is I can, but the 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 the, the let's say the specification of the job itself it's not so uh, hard. Women also can care, but. Uh, I don't know. I, for me, it looks like as a discrimination for women too. Uh, actually, another one. This is also as a reason. Also, also what I have um, about the inductions expectations, for example. You know, uh, most of not so good uh, companies. They off the in the in the first time they offer you, they promise you like uh, gold mountains, like you will get some very good career developments and so on. But the, at the um, really at the really a situation, you will get not what you want actually. You what you have expected, right? Uh, all this is all our reasons. Uh, of resignations. Also, place the uh, when uh, the office will allocate very far away from your house. This is also important. It won't be not convenient for people get time to get your job. Uh, and okay, thanks very much for today. I have got your answers. About uh, I have some answer from Nurzai. Mr. Nurzai asked me about uh, what is uh, development training and induction. So the training and development, the training programs when the company offer you special courses uh, to increase your knowledge and skills. Development programs, development also would be uh, concerns about the knowledge and the experiences. Like development programs, like some companies uh, can offer the overseas courses uh, or give you some opportunity uh, to get uh, the overseas ex experiences, uh, different uh, like uh, appointments, which would be uh, over, uh, in different uh, like leading companies. Induction, induction. When you are uh, f the the first time when you are introducing with the company, you are learning about the company. Uh, you are learning about the, your main duties and opportunities. This is the induction. So that's all. Anyone wants to add add something about the discussions questions? No one. Sorry. Okay, some um, Mr. asked me about the uh, the difference between the training and induction. Like okay, examples for training. Training, we the company offer trains for existing employees to train them. To tra uh, for example, uh, if you have some. Um, 
you also as IT, you have some new programs. You need a training to work under this program. So the the company offer you uh, the the training courses based on the program. But induction induction this is the 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 first level when you enter and when you are in the process of the recruiting uh, of the uh, when you are uh, going to be recruited as an employee. Induction when. Um, and HR manager presenting you the company, your duties, your main responsibilities, or you presenting the, the company strategies, its main productions, about its production, about its goods and services, and so on. Yes, uh, the training, the induction is a train in the in, in introducing the organizations, right? Uh, uh -huh, that's all, in the first three months. Yeah, that's, that's true, the Mr. Knight gives us a very simple answer. So, and so what else? We have some homework. We have uh, and, uh, two, for two topics, the ending the contract, the, the <coughs> you look at um, the Human Resource Management 7 Editions ebook that I have sent you, pages to 10 to 9, and the Focus on Kills, part 2. You ha in the focus on skills, you have some uh, the, the like practice, practical assignments based on the selection of interviewing. So that's all for today. As I I know that I uh, I missed some recordings in the um, in the starting of the classes. So actually, I try to to manage it. For the rest of students who have haven't joined the class for today, sorry because I think I forgot because I am a little sick. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. If not any question, we can finish our class. It's already nine two hours. Thanks a lot. Uh, so thank you for joining the class. If any questions, just email for me. If you have, you, if you don't have the ebook that I sent you previously, just let me know. So goodbye.